The following presentation of the Daily Mass is made possible by your generous donations to Catholic Television of San Antonio. The Archdiocese of San Antonio and CTSA invite you to join us in celebrating these sacred mysteries, listening to God's word and partaking of spiritual communion. Welcome to the Daily Mass. We gather today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. As we come together, the 16th just seems like an ordinary, everyday day. As a kid, I used to think, ooh, tomorrow's 10 days to Christmas. But now, today is the last day before we enter a unique time. We start with the O Antiphons tomorrow. Sunday, I'm not sure how we do that, but there's an O Antiphon for every day till Christmas. It's the only time that we really count toward something. So as we finish up this first part of Advent, we have Gaudete Sunday this weekend. We realize that we can get distracted by counting toward Christmas. So let's pause and realize it's not about what's coming it's not really about what's been, but for us right at this moment, where are we now? How do we need to open ourselves and what do we need to ask forgiveness for so we can truly be present to the mysteries we celebrate? I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. My fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, through the Mary, we have the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. May the splendor of your glory dawn in our hearts, we pray, Almighty God, that all shadows of the night may be scattered, and we may be shown to be children of light by the advent of your only begotten Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Sirach. In those days, like a fire, there appeared the prophet Elijah, whose words were as a flaming furnace. Their staff of bread he shattered. In his zeal, he reduced them to straits. By the Lord's word, he shut up the heavens and three times brought down fire. How awesome are you, Elijah, in your wondrous deeds, whose glory is equal to yours. You were taken aloft in a whirlwind of fire and a chariot, a chariot with fiery horses. You were destined, it is written, in time to come to put an end to wrath before the day of the Lord. 
to turn back the hearts of fathers toward their sons and to reestablish the tribes of Jacob. Blessed is he who shall have seen you and who falls asleep in your friendship. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face and we shall be saved. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face and we shall be saved. O shepherd of Israel, hearken. From your throne upon the cherubim, shine forth. Rouse your power. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face and we shall be saved. Once again, O Lord of hosts, Look down from heaven and see. Take care of this vine and protect what your right hand has planted, the Son of Man whom you yourself made strong. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face and we shall be saved. May your help be with the man of your right hand, with the Son of Man whom you yourself made strong then we will no more withdraw from you. Give us new life, and we will call upon your name. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we shall be saved. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his path. All flesh shall see the salvation of God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. As they were coming down the mountain, the disciples asked Jesus, Why do the scribes say that Elijah must come first? He said in reply, Elijah will indeed come and restore all things. But I tell you that Elijah has already come. And they did not recognize him, but did to him whatever they pleased. So also will the Son of Man suffer at their hands. Then the disciples understood that he was speaking to, to them of John the Baptist. The Gospel of the Lord. It's just a side note. I'm looking at the wreath there, and I'm thinking, they hid the pink candle. I know it's rose, but the pink candle in the back. That front candle is going to be lit for exactly one day. I would rearrange it if it was mine. See, the thoughts that go through my brain. Luckily, I don't share most of them. I hear, every time I hear this gospel, I think about an argument I had while I was an Air Force chaplain. This person who was, an, I'm not going to say what religion, but not your mainline Christian, but was considered Christian, was arguing with me that one of the challenges we have in believing Jesus is that Jesus can't come again until Elijah comes. And I'm like, it's in the gospel. I think it's, I know I'm Catholic, not Protestant, but I'm pretty sure it's Matthew. And it's there. That, they said, but Jesus didn't say that. This person knew their Bible well. And I said, but it made it into the inspired word of God, which for me is good enough. Now, let's think about that as we're preparing. In this season of preparation, how often do we get ourselves caught up on the little things? You know, there's so many contradictions in Scripture. Of, I'm, a, I'm almost done for the second time for Bible in the year. And you can look through and pull out all the things that are wrong or seemingly contradictions or that don't make sense, or questions of this or that. Or you can look and say, how is God trying to reach me with the same message, but in a different way? 
It's easy for us to find reasons not to believe. It's easy for us to find reasons to think, oh, well, that's just a bunch of human stuff or whatever. And somebody said to me the other day, well, I'm just going to become Episcopalian. They seem happy and they seem to have enough money. It's like, you need to go talk to them. But they said, they're always happy. It's like, okay, what are you upset with? And they said, this person, that person has done all these awful things. And how could this happen and that happen? I'm like, oh boy. I said, is it about the people or about the faith? And then this person says something very interesting. Well, the faith is the same. I said, but is it? <clears throat> we have a consistent line of who we are back to Abraham through the whole Jewish community to Jesus and all the way through all the popes to Francis today. And as we look at that and we realize who and what we are, there's a consistency there. And when our brains try to find things that are wrong or things that don't seem to fit, that's maybe God challenging us to take a different perspective and to look and to see what the message might be for us. Because this book that we call the inspired word of God isn't just for us in North America. It isn't just for those people in the Middle East. It's for all of God's people. And when we try and think it all has to make sense in our brains at any given time, we lose. Because there's so much breadth and knowledge of what's here that we just need to step back and say, okay, if this doesn't make sense or this is challenging or whatever else, how can I find God working through this in my life? It's like I tell people, it's the difficult people in our lives that truly help us to be holy because they're the ones that are harder to find the presence of God in. So we find challenging things. How do we find God? And how are we being that agent of light, as the opening colleague said, how are we seen as a children of the light? And if we can say, well, not always, that's our challenge for the next few weeks. How can we use this time so that people will see us as God's children of light? With the word of the Lord in our hearts and on our minds, let us place our needs before our God. That God may bless the church with leaders endowed with Elijah's zeal for proclaiming the word, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Holy Spirit may inspire elected officials in working to uphold the dignity and sanctity of life from conception through natural death, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that the Lord may provide support and relief to women facing difficult pregnancies and to couples struggling with infertility. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those discerning a vocation to marriage, may they recognize the Holy Spirit working in their hearts and respond generously to the call of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that this faith community may be blessed with the fruits of the Spirit in all our work and ministries. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That all who have died may enter the heavenly Jerusalem, joining the angels and saints and giving glory to God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Gracious Father, confident in your infinite love for us, we make these requests. We ask that you help us as we pray to be more aware of your presence in all that we do. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Food of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice endures may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the sacrifice of our worship, we, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplished for us your saving work. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord. And from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work, so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offerings, and pour out on them the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death, and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice, filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you, and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead, and looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ who heals every division. 
Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis, our Pope, Gustavo, our Bishop, Mike and Gary, his auxiliaries, and help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven. With the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles, St. Anthony de Padua, and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then, freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we now can dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's so offer one another now a sign of Christ's peace. Peace, peace. Peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof. My soul shall be healed.
My Jesus, I believe all that you are in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you were already here, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feasts. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So thanks again, as always, to our sponsors and all those that make this possible. There was some confusion on Monday, so I think there was a mat, another Mass televised, but the CTSA was busy with some other things for Our Lady of Guadalupe and a few other things, so back. Of course, it's going to be crazy again because with... Christmas being the day after the fourth Sunday of Advent, maybe go volunteer at your church and help them make the transition because it's going to be a crazy day. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, proclaiming the good news with your lives. Please help this very important ministry to continue by sending a donation to Catholic Television of San Antonio, 2718 West Woodlawn, San Antonio, Texas, 78228, or contribute online at ctsa.tv.